Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. In this lesson, we'll go through different triggers which will guide you to different patterns which commonly come up in the UK CAP. We've come up with these triggers over the past three years of studying the UK CAP, and we feel that many of them are a great guide to pushing you towards a pattern just by looking for certain things and features in within sets. So, what are the different triggers? Well, to begin with, let's have a look at shape. If you see peculiar shapes, such as the crescent moon, we want you to think of the shape pattern curved versus straight shapes. This is becoming an increasingly common pattern in the UK cat. And for representing curved shapes, the question writers are very limited beyond using just circles. Therefore, they run out of shapes and resort to, the, to shapes such as the crescent moon. So when you see the crescent moon, it should be an immediate sign that you should check for a curved versus straight pattern. For position patterns, this is more general for position patterns on a whole, rather than the very specific curved versus straight for shape patterns on the previous slide. If you see lots of similar shapes in every box, think of position. There may be subtle differences in the arrangement. So for example, in set A, the triangle could always be above the square, whereas in set B, the square could always be above the triangle. Seeing nine shapes in a box as shown on the right is a fundamental sign that the position pattern is likely to be there. If all the shapes are similar in most of the boxes in set A, then there may be subtle changes between each one, but the fundamental rule will stay the same, and same for set B. If, for example, you see a triangle and circle next to each other in set A, it doesn't necessarily mean there has to be two things next to each other in set B. Instead, there could be a square on top of a circle in, in every box in set B. You can also look for diagonal relationships as well, but adjacent and above and below relationships are much more common. Next, we have orientation triggers. So, first of all, if you see arrows, straight away you should be thinking about orientation, as they're the biggest sign pointing towards direction. Arrows could be pointing in a particular direction. For example, set A could have three arrows pointing to the right in each box, whereas set B has two arrows pointing up. Or, alternatively, they could be pointing at a particular shape. For example, in set A, the arrow could always point to a right angle shape, whereas in set B, the arrow could always point to an isosceles shape. Secondly, if you see many triangles, you can think about orientation as well, because triangles can point. And in addition to orientation, for triangles, we want you to think about isosceles versus right angle triangles, but we'll come on to this in the next section. Thirdly, if you see clocks, don't read them as telling the time. Clocks don't tell the time in the UK cap. Instead, they're just normal shapes, and the same applies for letters you might see in boxes. For clocks, therefore, we want to just think about the angles between the clock hands, and not the actual times being told by the clock. Next up we have number. There's a huge trap with counting, because many candidates fall into the trap of counting for every single question. However, on test day, you're only likely to get around one or two number patterns in total. If you counted for, let's say, 20 seconds on every single question in the UK cap, then you'd spend nearly half of your pattern spotting time, bearing in mind you have 40 seconds to spot the pattern, to just you spend half your time just for number patterns for the sake of one pattern or two patterns in the whole test. Therefore, you should only count if you see very few shapes. For example, in this example from the previous tutorial, where set A had an even number of shapes and set B had an odd number of shapes, there aren't many shapes at all in this particular um, group of sets. So therefore, number is a likely pattern. Next, we have colour. In the UK cap, they'll tend to use black and white shapes as their staple colour. However, at times, they'll expand into grey shapes, spotted shapes and striped shapes. 
And if you see these new variations, immediately think of colour, because they would have used these for a reason. Additionally, bear in mind that stripes can point in a certain direction. Finally, moving on to size. The number of size patterns is quite limited. Therefore, you tend to have only a certain common pattern, such as the big shape can be above a small shape in set A, whereas the big shape is always below the small shape in set B, or vice versa, or using left and right instead. However, they won't make it easy for you. In the majority of boxes, the big and small shapes might be very, very similar in size. Therefore, it would be very difficult to spot this pattern from those boxes. However, in at least one box, there should normally be a huge difference in size between the big shape and the small shape. Therefore, if you see one box, only, even only one box with just a huge shape and a small shape, straight away look for a big versus small pattern. Because this won't be present in every box, it may just be present in one box, and you need to latch onto this and look for the pattern and try to find it. So, that summarises the, summarizes the different triggers and we'll practice them step by step in the following tutorials where we take one section per tutorial of Sponks and go into it in full detail. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30 you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers and with each tutorial you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.